So my question next is, can agriculture navigate our futures? And even can agriculture convince our young generation? This is the uh, last issue of Global View Monthly, Yuan Jian Zha Zi. That in this, in this issues, it's just talking about the future agriculture indicates more and more big companies invest in agricultural industries. And even the Chinese titles here, is, if you invest in agriculture, you can make money silently because everybody will take uh, their attention, pay their attention in the high tech industry, but no one will care about agriculture. And other magazine, very popular magazine in Taiwan, also try very hard to convince agriculture is the most important and profitable business. So in the, the commerce weekly, the business weekly, a new title in Chinese that's called Rich Farmers for the New Generations, Xin Fu Nong. And usually this kind of hat is for farmers, but now on the top of this hat, there's a crown, a gold crown, which means that now if you become farmers, then you have a chance to be crowned. And this one, even interesting, the subtitle says, Taiwanese agriculture tax on the world. So with these three very, very popular magazines, published in Taiwan. You know, I have been trying very hard to convince my students that agriculture is worth worth of your studies. So I use some uh, I use some uh, top shot that most of them you know quite well. The first one is uh, Jim Rogers and then Warren Buffett and even Larry Fink and Bill Gates now they all switched their pocket money from high tech into agriculture or even food related industries. So the investment in agriculture will be of more worse than that of gold. So if you have money, don't invest in the gold market, invest in agriculture, that you will get paid more. So this is my first argument to try to just impress you that our strength in MBVSD is agriculture. So the second part, I'm going to say, what are the strengths of my universities? National Pindong University of Science and Technology. In short, you can call my university and post. And my university actually are located in the Tropic of Cancer, in between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropical of Capricorns. So this, uh, the climate is uh, sort of the tropic and subtropic zone. And this is also the most suitable areas for agricultural production, and even most important areas for food production. And this is my university. We look at it in between these two uh, uh, tropics. And my university actually has been established for almost 90 years. By the end of this, uh, uh, this year, it will be celebrating its 90th anniversary. And we, we focus on tropical agriculture, green engineering, and biotechnology for what I mean, knowledge-based agriculture industry. So nowadays, when I talk about agriculture, I mention that you have to study many, many disciplines, including biologists, including biotechnology, and even biomechatronics, so on and so forth. So it's an interdisciplinary uh, subject. And this is our university's chronicles, just for you uh, to take a, uh, take, a, take a look. And this is my university, because when we talk about agriculture, Normally, we need a huge space to provide to the students 
for their hands-on practice. Because the former chairman, Dr. Koichiro, just mentioned that in many of the universities in Japan, probably they, they don't have this kind of the, I mean, luxury facility for students to do their practice. So we should have the space for our students to put their own, put their own hands on, the, on everything. And this is my university, taking the photos from the sky. Very beautiful. And you see, that's very green. And even very also suitable for agriculture. So this is our plight. And this is our beautiful campus. We take the photo for the different seasons. And it looks just like all your painting of Vincent Van Gogh, and our beautiful ecologi ecological lakes, and uh, our academic structures. Mostly, we have uh, six colleges. But I would mention that with these six different uh, colleges, that all are integrated into one subject, that's uh, tropical agriculture. And we also put some sub-focus, like medical agricultural biotechnologies, ecosystem and disaster protection, so on and so forth. They are all integrated into one goal, that's uh, tropical agriculture. So when I say tropical agriculture, that's uh, the knowledge-based agriculture for tropical and subtropical area agricultural production. And this focus, these axis, these features are all support and even integrate from the six different colleges. And this is our teaching and research strategy. We have what we say we encourage our professor to do the process of product oriented research. And we even ask our professors to teach the student based on mission. This mission oriented, oriented teachings. And with these two strengths, then we can work very closely with the industry. This is called AIC. So we have a three PRs for our universities. One is POR and the MOT, and the third, AIC. I think this is the, the, the three PRs. And now these three PRs have, have found a function, a function very well, okay? And this is our, our vertical and horizontal strategy for career mapping for our students. When I say our students, which means we also include not only the local students, but international students. So we have our industry college on campus. We have several measures that we implement this idea of industrial college on campus. For example, we encourage our professors, one professor, one enterprise, which means that the professor at least, they have to work with at least one company to get the relationship and also the cooperations. And even we have a co-teaching of the industry, from the industry as experts, or even we recruiting the student from the vocational high school. And with these ideas, industrial college on campus, we work with the industry unions. And with the result, we work with industrial unions, we can even diffuse out the cooperation result. And so the students on campus, they get the chance to do their practical training. I think this is probably the only one university with so huge campus in Taiwan, which has been the so, I mean, luxurious to provide so much space for the student to do their licensed, licensed program training. I think this is very important for their, for their careers on what we call the knowledge-based agriculture. So I just want to show you that 
we have about 29 real-sized practical training facilities. For example, this is our wood factory. It's even bigger than the wood factories outside. So we provide many kinds of the practice for students, and students can have, they have the chance to do all the, the, tim, the, the temporary and even the wood craft design. And uh, we also have the working dog training centers. I think probably this is the only one in the world. And also wildlife rescue center inside the campus. I think this is also the only one university in the world to accommodate this very special program. And the students, they have to go to the field. They have to become just like farmers in a dairy farm. And they also have to do their practice on the orchid plantation. And even we have the environmental center for livestock waste management and animal hospitals. We have so many of these kind of the facilities. So I would like to just skip some of photos. So that's in the year of 1997, we started to recruit the international students. And we have a very unique department. We call Department of Tropical Agriculture and uh, International Cooperation. And the students, they come here for taking their studies in agriculture related studies. And with that, so we provide the students many experimental sites on campus. And I would like to mention that to Dr. Patama, this is this guy, probably you know him quite well. That's the Prince Patatich Rajami. He came to our university to sign MOU with us. And the reason he came to us because of our fans in agriculture. So he because he presides the Royal Project Foundation in Northern, Northern Thailand. They, they, they need a lot of the agricultural technologies. So we are the one he chose for corporations. And even inside the university, because we try to change the traditional image of the agriculture, so we put a lot of efforts. For example, this is an innovative champignons production, and this mushroom, and uh, we have very successful cooperation with the industry. Even this know-how has been uh, transferred and also become a, commercial, a, co a commercialized production scale. And talk about biomechatronics. We even integrate biomechatronics in the, the plant factories. And the advantage of the plant factories for the future agriculture is there's no pesticide residues, no bacteria counts, no heavy metals pollution, no nitrates. So this also not only provide the solution for food security, but also food safety. And some su success cases for the academia industry cooperation that also responded to the question by Dr. Koichiro, that we have many of this research because of the technology transfers to the companies outside or even directly transfer from the professor to the students. So they have a lot of the uh, success stories inside the campus. And one of the best is this one. This is a very traditional soy sauce, but the process is to produce the traditional soy sauce with very low salt content. So we have very good business of this item, just even inside the campus store. Each year, we sell at about 100 million NT dollars at the small campus stores. And those also make a lot of extra money for the university. I think this is one of the very practical and successful story for the academic industry collaboration. So, based on what I just uh, introduced, we have to think globally, but at locally. So my university is here, somewhere here. And we try to implement 
our ambition to help our government establish what we call the Green Silicon Valley. So you have learned the second very attractive terms. The first is the knowledge-based agriculture, and the second is green Silicon Valley. So that's a very contrast to the traditional Silicon Valley uh, as we have in Xinzhou Science-Based Park. So our experience and success cases, I think that's the, our international degree programs for the international talents. But these programs are also provided to local students. So we have many kinds of the programs like uh, uh, telemed programs, international master programs, and dual degree programs, and even offshore programs. So this is the foreign students in my university this year. We have 600 plus, and they come in from 44 different countries and regions. And among the countries, I think the Malaysia is the number one, and Vietnam, Thailand, and uh, Hong Kong, and some, and some other countries are also a very important resources for our foreign students. And they, they are doing very good in my universities. And they also feel very satisfied with the uh, academic training in my university. <clears throat> so I think this is the, their academic performance. This one is from the Burkina Faso, and from the Swaziland, and from the Burkina Faso too, and even from the Thailand. We have many Thailand, uh, we have we have many Thai students before. And even with this kind of international experience and success cases, so two years ago we established a very important consortium. The name is called University Network for Tropical Agriculture. 